My dear brothers and sisters, I wish to welcome you to the third Sunday of Lent. Today, in the Gospel, Jesus entered the temple and cleansed the temple, throwing away the money belonging to the money changers, and of course, reminding them that the house of the Lord should be a house for prayer or of prayer. Dear friends in Christ, in our first reading today, the church reminds us through the book of Exodus, the commandments of the Lord. So I like us to really reflect basically on five important points or six important points. The first one is, why did God give his people the Ten Commandments? Before I get into this, let us remember that all of us, we are all the temples of God. It took God six days to create the world, and he rested on the seventh day. Of everything that God created, human beings are the only ones he created that he may dwell in them. Of course, God is present in everything that he has created, but God is mostly present in the human person because the soul is the imprint of God in man. God created human beings, only human beings he created in his own image and likeness. So we are all the temples of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and even in the gospel passage we have today, because Jesus will say, destroy this temple and in three days I will rebuild it. Of course, he was talking about his Paschal mystery, but he's also talking about his body. <laughs> because the people misunderstood him, they thought he was talking about the physical temple, but they did not understand that we are also the temples of God. In fact, we are the original temples of God that he built by himself in his own image and likeness. So God created us that he may dwell in us. And that's why we are the dwelling place of God. Now let's come to the reason why God gave the Ten Commandments. God gave the Ten Commandments not because he wanted to police his people. It was not for policing. No, God gave the Ten Commandments, number one, as the expression of his love. Because he wanted the people, he wanted us to walk through the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is like the pathway, the road to eternal life. The road to entering into relationship with him. If we walk through the Ten Commandments, we will enter into relationship with Him. So God gave the Ten Commandments like we are going to walk step by step through them and we will arrive in Him. God also gave the Ten Commandments to establish a sort of harmony among His people so that there will be order. Imagine a society where there is no order. There will be chaos. So God gave the Ten Commandments to establish equality, to make sure that the community is an egalitarian community. Remember that his people were coming from different places, even though they all came from Egypt. But remember that they were different families. And for, for them to be united, they needed a rule. They needed a common way of living. That's why when you look at the Ten Commandments, you see that number one, number two, number three, speak to us about vertical relationship with God. It speak to us about reverence to God. When you look at number four to number ten, you understand that they speak to us about interpersonal relationship, which is respect. So the Ten Commandments can be divided into two. One, two, three... Vertical relationship, reverence. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Horizontal relationship, interpersonal relationship, respect. Now the second point i like us to reflect on, dear friends in Christ today, this Sunday, is that not keeping these Ten Commandments is actually what makes us dirty and smelly. You know, when you see the, the truck, the basurahan, the, the truck that carries dirt, 
you close your nose. Why? Because it is offensive. It is dirty. It is smelly. In the same way, when we live in disobedience to the Ten Commandments, our life becomes so dirty and we become so smelly. Why do you wash your clothes? Why not just put on your clothes that way? It is because you don't want to appear bad in front of other people. You don't want to be smelly. You don't want to be dirty. So today, the third point, today I like us to focus on the things that make us dirty. Because the Ten Commandments is basically about relationship. As I say, the reverence and respect. It's all about relationship. Now, let's focus on the things that make us dirty. I will talk about four important things that make us dirty. You can add other ones. The first thing that makes us dirty and smelly is the sin of pride, arrogance. A proud person is self-sufficient. A proud person is manipulative. A proud person is not open-minded. A proud person is close-minded. And this is very, very difficult for the person really to be attractive to the next person in order to enter into relationship with that person. You know, it's easy for people to sit back, complain and say, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me. But most times we have put a blockade, an obstruction between us and the next person. So we cannot enter into relationship. And even if we enter into relationship, it cannot be meaningful. It cannot thrive because there is a big obstacle, which is pride. The second thing that we need to really, you know, root out from ourselves, we need to clean up. Because as Jesus entered the temple, he did paglimpio. He purified the temple. He cleansed the temple. If you want to have a good relationship with yourself, with God, and with the people around you, you have to take care of your pride. The second thing is anger. They get angry easily. They get irritated easily. If you are the kind of person who gets you know, angry, you know, resentment, bitterness, wrath, rage is inside you, these things make you dirty. They make you smelly such that people don't want to come to you. You may be wondering why I don't have friends. It is because you get angry easily. And when you get angry, you become judgmental. When you get angry, you say all kinds of bad words. That is why you don't have many friends. And that's why your relationship do not last. I have seen young people, especially young girls, you know, saying, you know, Father, I'm 30 years, Father, I'm 40 years, Father, I'm 25 years, I've not gotten married. But just simple situation, you cannot handle it. You get upset, you get irritated, and you think a man likes that. Or you think a woman likes that. The third thing that we need to really focus on and root out, clean up from ourselves, is the issue of gossip. People are looking for someone they can trust. Most people make friends because they need someone to rely on. They need someone to depend on. They need someone they can trust. But if your mouth is like ABS, CBN, your mouth is like GMA, your mouth is like CNN, your mouth is like Fox News, your mouth is like NTA, your mouth is like uh, BBC, it may be difficult for someone to trust you. So you cannot really have meaningful relationship because you can't keep secret, because you can't even close your mouth. Nothing is secret for you. You say everything to everyone. This may be difficult, and this may be the reason why you are smelly. This is, may be the reason why you are dirty, because people don't want to associate with someone who is a chronic gossip. The fourth thing is expectation. There are many of us who cannot really enter into relationship because of our personal inordinate expectations. And these expectations, they create fear in us. They make us dirty because, you know, each time we want to enter into relationship, we have a lot of things we're expecting. We are close-minded. We are not open-minded. And this is the reason why it is almost impossible to have friends. The fifth point is that Lent means let's erase negative thoughts and things in our lives. Look inside yourself and check. I look inside myself. 
Today, you know, this third Sunday for me is a day we should have introspection. Look inside yourself, your thoughts, your words, your actions. Look inside and find out what are the things that really, you know, make me dirty? What are the things that make me, you know, smelly before the next person? I have to erase that. As Jesus entered the temple and cleansed the temple, today he gives us the grace. He gives us the grace to really enter inside our own selves, confront yourself, confront yourself and ask yourself, what are the things I need to clean up? And I'm very certain that the grace of God is sufficient for each and every one of us. I wish you a blessed third Sunday of Lent.